Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brett and I'm here to talk to you about all things virtual teaching. Whether you're teaching kids all the way over in China or right here in your backyard, I want to be the one to tell you tips, tricks, and ideas to get your virtual teach on. So let's get started. <laughs> One of the resources that I use in the virtual classroom that I absolutely love and I'm hoping you will be able to love it too. Um, right now, since there's a lot of you that are on a forced break <laughs> home for a few weeks and you're trying to figure out, you know, how can I help my students who are at home? Some districts are making you do um, virtual lessons or do Zoom lessons and you're trying to jump into this pond of virtual teaching and you're a little overwhelmed. I feel you. <laughs> it's a big jump. Those of us that are actual virtual teachers will tell you it is not easy. It's not just sitting at home, kicking up your feet and sipping on coffee um, while you watch the kids. It's a, it's a lot more. There's a lot more that goes into it. So I wanted to share this resource with you. It's something that you can easily use in the classroom and it's called Nearpod. If you don't already know what Nearpod is, it is a lesson, like you can create your own lesson. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that, um, but it's really great to use in the online virtual classroom. Um, this is something that you can push out to your students where they can do it independently, um, or what we would call you know, asynchronously in the virtual world, meaning they can do it whenever. You can send it through a remind, hey, check out this link, go through this lesson. You can set up the lesson exactly the way you want to. You can include worksheets, you can include YouTube videos, you can include your own lecture, lots of stuff. You can put whatever you want in there, push it out to your students that way. Or if you are in a district where they are wanting you to do live lessons, this is something that can easily be incorporated into things like Zoom or you know Google Classrooms or whatever your district is having you use. So it's another way that's not so mundane for the students. Um, they get tired of just hearing us teach <laughs> and going through PowerPoint lessons, which is what we typically do. So I like to use this in the classroom, gives them a little bit of break. So let me walk you through how to use it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go. So once you enter Nearpod, you're going to be taken to your kind of home library screen. Um, you'll see along the left hand side a bunch of different options that you can use. So there's a couple of things I want to show you first. Right now we're in my library. This is where I have all of my lessons that I have created or that I've downloaded. At the top, if you go to Nearpod Lesson Library, it's going to take you to all of the library lessons that are available that have been created by other people or that by Nearpod. These are really great, uh, especially if you're first getting started. You can search for what you're looking for. Um, if you are on um, uh, the free <laughs> Nearpod, you can also search for ones that are free. If you have the paid version, you can access pretty much everything. So let's say I wanted to teach, let's try um, ELA find a lesson here so that you can get an idea. And let's go into reading comprehension. They have lessons for literally everything and all the levels that you would possibly want. Let's do three to five. All right, so here are all the different lessons that you could pick. Maybe I wanna do a little um, lesson here, reading story. All right, so it's gonna pull it up and you can preview it, see if this is what you are looking for. Um, you can preview through it, um, the pages, make sure it's what you're looking for, has essential questions, the objectives, just like you would a lesson in a regular class. Um, so it'll provide the students with questions, they can write answers, um, it will have different games in them, all kinds of things that you can do here in the classroom here. This one has a little story for them to read as well. So if you decide, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. This is great. You can save it. And when you press save, it's going to save that to your library. All right, so this one is saved in my library. I can head back to my library and it will pop up. There it is right there. So I can either uh, assign it just like it is, or I could edit it. And we can talk about that kind of in more detail in a future if, uh, video if you're interested, but you can assign it to the student or you can edit it. 
If you don't want to use one of the pre-made lessons, you can create your own lesson. Again, I can go through this in more detail, um, but you have two options when you create your own lesson. If you already have a lesson in Google Slides that maybe you use in the classroom, you can just convert that to a Nearpod lesson by just uploading the lessons um, in Google Slides. And again, you can edit them. Once you get it in there, you can add things. You can edit things around if you want to. Or you have the option to create a whole lesson in Nearpod. So when you open that, it'll give you kind of a blank lesson, and you can just start adding what you are looking for as you go. So now here I am in my blank lesson. I could just make a title, reading. I teach reading, so <laughs> that's coming up. And then I can just start adding slides. You'll see a whole bunch of different options when you are creating your own lesson. If you click Add Content, it's going to allow you to just add a slide. So you could create a slide just like you would create a PowerPoint slide. You can create that in here. Um, it'll give you different options. You can upload pictures, you can upload a video, whatever you'd want. You'll also have the option to upload flocabulary videos. These are different um, reading and fluency and science. They put different things to music. They're kind of fun for the students. You have um, the option to do some field trips. I really like these different field trip options for the students. I used one of these the other day. We were talking about the post office. You can click on the post office and it will take you to post offices all over the world. So you could add one of these post offices into your lesson, and then the student is going to be able to go on a 3D virtual field trip. They can move it all around and take a look at it. So see, I can take a look at the post office. Look, there's FedEx, there's DHL, and kind of get an idea um, of what that looks like. So there's tons of those, which are really kind of fun for the student as well. You can add those into the lesson. You also have the option to add in graphing calculators. So if you're working with upper level math, that might be fun. BBC videos, Microsoft Sway. If you use Microsoft Sway at all, you can add that. You can add in a slideshow. You can add in a video. You can also add in audio. So one of the things I like to do is I create a slide and then I just um, create audio over it. So I'm kind of like giving my lecture as I'm going through the PowerPoint and the student has it right there. You could also add in a PDF or even live Twitter. You also have the choice to add web content. So this would be if you have a YouTube video or a website that you want them to go to as part of the lesson, you can add that in. Makes it really easy for the students. Um, so let's say, I don't even know what this YouTube video is, but we'll add it in there. <laughs> uh, and then when the student gets to that slide, the YouTube video will just play within the context. Or if it's a, web, um, a website you want them to go to, when they click on it, it'll open up the website for them as well. And then the third option you have, which is what you'll probably be using a lot of, is the Add Activity button. So when you add an activity, you've got a bunch of different choices. Time to Climb is like a little game. So you put in questions, and as they get it right, their little guy climbs up the mountain. And um, this is made for a live lesson. Uh, so if you're doing it live, you can see the students all competing against each other um, to get to the top. So you can't use that if you're doing a self-student-paced uh, lesson. But if you're doing a live lesson, you can use that and watch the students try to get to the top. You have the option to do an open-ended question. This is where you just ask a question, gives them a little spot to type in their answer. You can do matching pairs, which allows you to match. Um, you can use images in this as well, which I like. So here's what the matching pairs look like. I could just add um, a pair of things. I can add text or I can add image. They're going to match up so that the students can play a matching game in class. You have the option to put in a quiz, again, which is really nice. You can put in the quiz, uh, just like multiple choice quiz, true, false, that sort of thing. Um, you have Draw It, which is really nice, especially for those of you that are trying to enter into um, virtual teaching from a regular brick and mortar school. Because what you can do with Draw It is you can upload your worksheet that you would have typically given to the students, and they can draw right on it. Um, so I can upload, um, you know, whatever worksheet I would typically use and it allows them to have a pencil, a pen, and they can draw right on it. Um, so anything like that that you would normally give them in class to do at their desk, you can just upload it um, in here as an image and they'll be able to use it.
You have collaborate, which again is a really neat feature, and this can create some collaboration between your class. So you can use this in a live or you can use it in a self-paced lesson, but it allows the student to input little sticky notes. Um, so for those of you that, um, especially in the classroom where you, those of you I know using sticky notes and having kids collaborate like that um, can do that. So you can uh, have them choose a style of sticky note and basically it will stick them to the board. So as students answer, their little sticky notes will um, show up on the board with the other kids so they can read the other students answers as well. You can do a poll uh, again with your students so um, you can ask a question and see what the students answer. You can do fill in the blanks. You can also do a memory test so um, this is like the memory game <laughs> um, so they can try and remember where things are. Great if you're using vocabulary terms or you know different um, curriculum you know science social studies type thing. I'm just trying to get them to practice a little bit more with any of that content. Those are all the different options you have when you're creating your own lesson. Really is very flexible. You can add in pretty much anything that you would um, have, any PDFs, um, you know, images, that GIFs, GIFs, however you say that. They can all be uploaded in there um, for the students. So once you have your lesson exactly the way you want it, you've got two options. As I mentioned before, you can either do it as a live lesson or you can do it as a student paced lesson. So a live lesson is where you are actually controlling the slides. So this is really great if you are doing classes in Zoom um, or some other kind of meeting space. If your school is going to be doing live classes um, where the students are going to be joining you at a certain time, this is great because what you can do in a live lesson is you can either give the student the link, which I find easiest to do in a virtual environment. If you were in a regular brick and mortar environment and they're using iPads or that kind of stuff, they could put in a, this code. Um, or you can just launch the live lesson um, and the students uh, can join uh, that way. So once you launch the live lesson, you can either give them a code to put in if they've already got the Nearpod app or Nearpod.com up on their computer, um, or you can just give them the link directly in your meeting room, so in Zoom or whatever uh, you're using. Or if you're in Microsoft Teams, you can just add it right there or in the Google Classroom, you can add it. Um, so lots of different ways to share that with the students. Um, and then you will be able to see as they enter. So you'll be able to see, oh, Johnny entered, Sue entered. We're waiting on three more people. You know, you can see them as they enter. And then you'll be able to walk them through the live lesson and you'll be able to make sure that everybody's on the same page as you. You'll be able to see their answers. It's really nice to be able to keep track of who's doing, you know, you know, who's on track with you, who's answering correctly, who's not answering correctly maybe what areas you need to come back and touch on again. Your other option is to do it as a student paced lesson. So a student paced lesson, the students can do this with or without you. Um, so again, this is really nice if you're not going to be with the students live. So if you just want to send them a lesson to do at home on their own, uh, whenever they have time and when they want to, if you want to send them extra practice work, you can launch it as a student paced lesson. Again, you can either give them the code to put in or you can give them the link um, or any of the different options that they have. Again, um, you can just send it by email. Remind, if you use Remind, you can easily send us, hey, here's something you guys can do on, you know, while we're at, on break. Um, and they can go through it on their own. You are going to get all of the data. So let me take you just to one that has data. Hold on. So you can just check out the reports. So this tells me on which set, you know, sessions that I had opened and who did it. And this is going to give me um, all of the data. So again, you can click on students individually to see how they did on each question. You can get an idea in general, you know, who was participating, who didn't participate, um, and you know, who was getting it, who wasn't getting it. Maybe there's a question that all the kids bombed. You will know that. We need to go back over that. So this session report's really great. You can download the report and share it with team, other teachers on your team um, or save it for um, documentation for your data later, later on. So again, really helpful to have all of that data right there for you as well. Okay, so there it is. That is Nearpod in a nutshell. <laughs> I should clone that. Nearpod in a nutshell. Okay. 
Anyway, <laughs> um, I, if you have any questions about Nearpod, definitely leave them down below. If you're interested in me making any videos about specific parts that you're unsure of, also let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. Let me know if you try it out in your classroom. Um, it's awesome to use in a brick and mortar classroom as well, especially if you have class iPads. They can all get on at the same time and have the it right there in front of them while you walk them through a live lesson. It's awesome. Uh, so enjoy your time virtual teaching. I hope you will come back and check out my channel again soon. Until the next one, get your virtual teach on.